And my first piece of advice for you is get a map. Get a map. Get a big ass map. Seriously. People forget when this game came out, it came in a big box with a tiny little CD case and a manual and a map. Now there's a nifty online map you can use um, if you want, but if you've got access to a printer, what I recommend you do is to actually print the map out, right? A proper big one, big poster size. It'll be the best thing you can ever do for Morrowind. Now a second rather important tip I've got for you is the installation of the Morrowind code patch. Whether you're playing with or without mods, it doesn't matter. You really need to install this. It's going to fix loads of little bugs. There's also a couple of additional options you might want to play with. Um, shortcut key improvements is a much more efficient way of getting around Morrowind. Um, and unrestrict menu size. If you're playing with a custom resolution, you might want to check that one out, because that'll let you squeeze everything and fit them nicely. Now for our newer players, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice on, on stamina, or fatigue, it's actually called in here. Stamina, basically. Okay, when your stamina is at zero, um, NPCs don't like it. Because, I mean, it makes sense, really. If somebody comes, say, running into your shop, <laughs> can I have... <laughs> you, you know, it doesn't look very good, does it? So I, I can't blame them for that. But also, if, if you have a weapon out, they, you know, again, if you walk into a shop, say, waving a screwdriver at somebody, you, you may not mean them any harm, but it doesn't look very good. So, yes, yeah, that does apply here. So your disposition with them will likely be lower, with lower stamina. And most importantly for our newer players, right, when your fatigue's low, I am not kidding you, you can't hit a barn door with a banjo. I mean, look at this. I've, I've got, I think I'm about 70 archery skill, I've got no fatigue, and I just can't hit something which is quite literally right in front of me. Um, so advice for the newer players, either pick up some cheap restore fatigue potions or something like that, or quite simply, if you see an enemy which you think you're going to have to fight ahead, start walking. Right, stop running and start walking and let your fatigue restore before you get into the battle. Right, now here's a really handy tip for acrobatics for you. And every time you come to a flight of stairs or a ramp or even a hillside, okay, spam your jump key. Look at that, bang, 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 bang. Every one of them is, is contributing to, to your acrobatic skill. Okay, it's ridiculous how quickly you can increase we make it. A special uh, likewise, uh, but if you low, think you can right. make it, jump off things as well. If you're not sure if you can survive the fall, just quick save. Because the bigger the jump, and the more damage it does to you, the more points you actually get to your acrobatic skill. So yeah, just jump. Any sort of a ramp, any sort of a little ledge, just get up there. Oh, there you go. Um, this is why I tell you never to put acrobatics and athletics as a minor or a major skill, because they're too easy to increase on their own. Now, athletics is just as easy as acrobatics to increase, if not easier. Um, all you've got to do is run. It's that simple. And remember, you can auto-run by pressing the Q key, is it? Yeah. You press your Q key, you will auto-run. You can use auto-run to set yourself up in a corner like this. Now, I think this is kind of cheating to an extent, but I think unless you put points into your speed and your athletics at the start of the game, you do move painfully slow. And uh, well, the game's about having fun, isn't it? So if you're going to have more fun by having 10 bonus points in your athletics at the start of the game, then yeah, go for it. Do this. Right, now for some console commands, some handy console commands you can use. Um, bring up the console by pressing your console key. If you're not sure which one that is, I'm afraid you're going to have to look it up because it's different depending on you know, which country and which layout you've got and whatnot. Um, for me, it's the one, if you've got a UK keyboard, it's the one under the escape key, above your tab key, kind of top left-ish. Now, occasionally you might notice an NPC get themselves wedged in a corner, or maybe they've just placed themselves inconveniently in the middle of a corridor. Just bring up your console and type in RA, that's Romeo Alpha, and that will reset actors. There you go. And God only knows where he's gone. It just resets them back to their original positions. Now if you find yourself stuck like this, and you might get wedged on something, uh, here's a good one for you. Type in TCL, that's Tango Charlie Lima, and that will toggle collision, which is basically like a no-clip mode. So you'll be able to unbug yourself using this. There we go. And go through pretty much all objects. I wouldn't try going through doors or glitching yourself under the map or something like that. It's quite scary under there anyway, to be honest with you. Um, be careful while you're doing this. It affects NPCs as well, so it's a good idea to reset actors afterwards. 
and to switch it back off again just place yourself above the ground type TCL again. Now gameplay wise this one doesn't help but I know there's a lot of people who like to take screenshots and stuff so this one's for you. If you type in TM, that's Tango Mic and that toggles your menus off like that so you can get yourself set up for a nice screenshot. Um, cursor. Click on the screen to get rid of your cursor. Right, books. Not only can you increase your stats by reading books like this, you just open it up and bam, you've got some skills in, in something that you never use, usually. Um, but no, if you want to read the books, there's a lot of history books about if you want to get into the Morrowind lore. But there's a few books which stand out though, okay? This one, this book I'm looking at now is called Breathing Water, and I don't know how I ended up reading this the first time around. I must have been bored. But I read it anyway, and I was chuckling to myself by the time I got to the end of it. Anyway, out of curiosity, I decided to go and check out the area that it was talking about in the book, and sure enough, uh, there was something there. I'm not going to give you any spoilers or anything, but yeah, if you see something that seems to stand out in a book, do go check it out. And if you come across this one, water breathing, so it's a bit of a treasure hunt for you. You'll also find as well, in a lot of the quests, they'll give you a book. Um, you don't have to read them, but you will find that if you open it up and read it, it might give you better directions or a better clue as to what, you, what you're supposed to do. Um, at the moment in my head, I'm thinking of the Pilgrim's Path. You cannot do those without the book. You need a copy of that book and you need to keep referencing it to try and figure out what it is you're supposed to do. Now Morrowind can suffer from some pretty long load times, but there's a couple of tricks you can um, keep doing to help reduce it. Um, the first one is to dispose of corpses after you kill a creature. Um, clicking dispose of corpse will pick up any items they're carrying, so be careful of that. But yeah, get rid of anything you can. And the second tip I've got for you is not to warm the whole street. Shut the bloody doors after you. What, were you born in a barn? No, really, shut the doors after you. That helps. Right, now I'm going to show you the Windwalker trick. Okay, now, the scroll of Windwalker is... I love it, it's brilliant, I love it so much, I actually included it in my transport travel guide as a legitimate form of, of, of teleport... Uh, not teleport, transportation, because it, it, look at it, it's great. Um, I'm going to show you with this it basically how to get an unlimited supply of them. You want to head over to the Telvanni Cantons in the Vivek area and um, it's the way it works I think. Yeah this is one. See I still get lost in Vivek. Okay down here somewhere, what's that? Nope. There's an enchanter. Now this works like the werewolf trick in Connor Flench Barrow or whatever it's called so quick save before you go in there. Once I go in there, now it's set for the rest of the game, unless I reload. Right, and we're just going to check to Come see on, if I it's a got scroll day, of Windwalker. You know. Now how this works is, there are certain merchants in the game, this being one of them, and they have um, certain slots in their inventory here. Some of these items are random, okay, they're random scrolls and they'll regenerate. So every time you play the game, some merchants will have something and they might sell one scroll one time and a different scroll the next time you play it through and yada yada yada. So what we're trying to do here is fill these random scroll slots. It's a shame I don't know which ones they are. We're trying to fill the random scroll slots with the Windwalker scroll. Now he hasn't got one there, so we just come out of this and, and hit reload. Now it might take you a few tries to do this. I'll be honest with you, I had to reload my game here about uh, seven three. times, I think. But... There it is, Scroll of Windwalker, and I can't afford it. What a shame. But yeah, so you basically just keep reloading and keep going in there until he's got your Windwalker. Once he, ha once he has got it, go outside and quick save, or, well, do a permanent save. You set then. So they're very expensive, but one of the best items I, I think you can get in the game. It also gives you invisibility as well, which is very nice. 60 seconds of invisibility. So that's all folks, if you've got any sneaky tips and tricks yourself, feel free to leave a comment, let everybody else know.